everything works. So it should be recording right now, so that's nice. Um, but as, what I'll do is I'll uh, share the recording with you before I, I'm even considering releasing it, so uh, no worries there whatsoever. Oh, that's, I mean, it's not that, that important. Uh, everything I say, I usually think is stupid, so you will. <laughs> Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> that's not a good. That's not a good way to think of yourself, of course. Oh, no, no, it's okay. It's okay. Okay, great. Okay, great. Superb. So we're at. Um, well, for me, it's 10 p.m. Uh, where, where are you located, Sean? I am in Florida, so it's uh, four o'clock here. A four o'clock. Where? Whereabouts in Florida? Uh, or Orlando. Oh, great. Oh, no, perfect. Orlando. Perfect. Yeah, I've got I've got a lot of family living in Florida as well, so I'm I'm there. Well, I won't be there for the foreseeable future, but I'm usually there every other year or so just to meet up with family. But I'm I'm there for for business as well occasionally. So, uh, and then of course, well, if you're in Orlando, well, then you've got other things to do, of course. Yeah, there's there's plenty to do here. We we keep entertained. Absolutely, absolutely. Well, first off, Sean, uh, thanks so much for. Uh, making the time to, to meet with, with me and the rest of the, uh, the gang here. Um, that's, that's, it's fantastic to have you join us and uh, just to pick your brain for, uh, <laughs> for a bit. So, well, first things first. So how, how did you actually end up w working with synthesizers in general? Uh, what was your musical upbringing like? How, how did that all happen? Um, um, well, first off, uh, uh, there's there's a history here because I am I am fairly old, <laughs> but I I uh, originally you know I used to be in my teens I would get Tangerine Dream albums and Pink Floyd albums and stuff and I'd see all the synthesizers on the sleeves and I'd be like oh man I really want to play with one of those but I knew I could never afford one, um, even though they were remarkably cheaper compared to how much they are now. Um, <laughs> And uh, I, I just, uh, I think back in my early 20s, I started off building uh, guitar pedals and uh, just, you know, synth noise boxes and, and stuff. And uh, I would say probably around 2005, I started to get into uh, modular synthesizers. I, I, I lurked around a lot on the uh, old electro music forums, um, got a copy of Electro Notes and just started <laughs> trying to do my old, own thing. And uh, I, I do a DIY, I just wanted a big DIY modular. And uh, I've got two pretty large cabinets of old DIY gear modular stuff that I built. It's not in any particular format. It's like six-inch panels and uh, every plus or minus 15 volts on the power. So it's like a just a cross between several different formats. <laughs> Perfect. A few years ago, I ended up doing um, actual or building in uh, the actual Eurorack format. Um, and I... Uh, started running into people, other people that were into this uh, locally and uh, realized that you know, people asked about the DIY stuff. I've always tried to get, a, I used to do a uh, modular uh, modular Mondays at our uh, local makerspace. Um, Great. And I always wanted to get some build nights together and stuff, but just haven't really had time. But I, in the meantime, I did uh, design some stuff with the intention of... Uh, uh, giving my friends DIY projects, but it mostly ended up being me selling boards and then uh, eventually just building modules and selling them. Um, I'm all for DIY. I'd like to eventually offer uh, DIY stuff of or versions of most of my stuff. I just haven't, I, I'm really bad with documentation um, considering that like, you know, probably my, a lot of my modules will, there'll be little tweaks and changes, you know, on the regular when I'm, building them uh so they uh they change a lot so mm -hmm. and is that because of the well changing uh uh changing well well, uh, well parts it's that mostly, you use or is that is that more of like oh well i want to calibrate this slightly differently or i'm i'm constantly uh trying to improve them uh i've, I've find little things all the time that i can change on on the designs and uh yeah Probably every revision I get back, or every time I go to get, I only do batches of uh, about twenty um, each time I build or do something. So uh, each time I, I send it back, I probably make some some sort of little change. 
Uh, so it, until I, I get all that stuff ironed out, I really don't uh, release them for DIY. Um, mm -hmm. And then uh, I, I would, like I had the um, envelope generators, my dual ADSR on Pusherman for a while, and I, I don't know if he still has it, but I really need to give him the newest version. So <laughs> that, that would be a good example where I've made a lot of changes to design over the last couple of years. And, uh, but that's all iterative, things. iterative uh, improvements, or have you really done Big Bang uh, redesigns as well. I've done a lot of Big Bang redesigns, uh, especially on the. I think that I did a, a big one on the hexagram where I just completely rearranged it and relayed it out. Uh, just and most of my changes for that, because the hexagram probably I sell more of than anything else. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's it, it is a really simple. I mean, the whole idea of that was to just see how many VCIs I could cram into eight HP. <laughs> um, I didn't do a good as good of a job as Lob Modular, but I didn't want to do a, um, a secondary board. I, I like to have everything on one board. Yeah. Um, but you know, it it, it's, it is exactly what it's supposed to be. But you know, it, it's a basic VCA, just six of them and a mixer. And uh, I, I did a big redesign where I just went back and did what I've decided my best practices are now. Um, you know, with the traces and how I have it laid out um, probably a year or two ago, because um, that was my oldest design at the time. Um, the uh, Brutalist I redid to, it was originally uh, based on the, ah, crap. The chip I used for the Brutalist originally that I, isn't coming to my head right now, I yeah. um, can't get, really get anymore. So I've been using, I changed it and I'm doing the KY uh, one. 140 chip, I believe, uh, mm -hmm. that from uh, that the uh, Polyvox uses and the, some of the, the Polyvox clones use. Um, I still think my design sounds different. It's also my version, so <laughs> I a big change on that when I decided I wanted to start using a different chip. Yeah. Yeah, so I, I do have a lot of stuff in the works. Uh, just haven't had a lot of time over the last couple of years to actually finish my designs and get things tested. I think the Sirius Veil was the, the last really big one, and then uh, I have the uh, Hexar, which is uh, a 12 HP um, envelope generator with uh, six AR generators and a couple nice. mixer stages that I actually need to put up for sale and post about. I just haven't yet. I've, I've no. had those those sitting around for a couple of weeks now. Ah, indeed. Well, I was just going to ask because I can't I can't find the uh, find that one on uh, on the website even. But yeah, yeah. I need to. I will probably post that sometime this week. It's just been a little uh, crazy lately for me. <laughs> my my day job it gets a little uh, consuming into my modular time. I can imagine. Yeah. I can I can only <laughs> I can sympathize with that absolutely. <laughs> My favorite one right now that I have coming new version of uh, the Entropy Cannon, uh, which is, I, I originally started off as kind of an analog version of a bit crusher, um, and it's not as, um, there is a person in the audience, Tokyo Drip, who is probably screaming to himself that it's not a bit crusher right now. <laughs> it's not, it's an audio rate sample and hold, it's an old kind of guitar pedal thing they, they did where they would try to get a, a bit crusher sound by kind of running it through a sample hold. Uh, but it's, it's a cross between a Bit, a crusher and a filter. It's got an envelope follower and an oscillator built in. Um, it's 12 HP, and it's basically my my main use for it was to use it as a uh, to for drums. Um, the envelope follower is normalized to the filter and the crusher and everything, so you get some nice. really cool sounds with drums. Um, and it's also got gate outputs, uh, adjustable gate outputs, so you can adjust the gate threshold and stuff if you want to use it to um, trigger envelope generators and stuff along with your drums. It, I, I need to do a demo on it and release that one as well. Oh, superb. I'm looking forward to that. Absolutely. But you already said uh, that. Yeah. Stop, I'm sorry. Yeah, no worries. No, this the. You're already answering so much, so many of the questions I already have. So that's that's just great. Uh, one of the things you already answered is uh, that the hexagram is probably like your um, your most popular module that you have. Um, is there a specific reason you think why that is? Or 
Um, I think it. I think it's just the number of uh, VCAs per HP that's the uh, the most appealing thing. Along, I mean, it's 129. I think is dollars this is what I've got it going for right now on my website. And uh, so I, I think the, the price per HP is probably the appealing part with it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It is pretty much a general purpose VC, uh, VCA, so it can be used with um, CV or audio. Yeah. So it's, it's, it's just useful. Um, after that, I think the other popular ones, the gravitational waves ever since uh, me and uh, my good friend, uh, X mortal or mobile plane uh, made a video for it long not long ago and I've uh, those have been selling a lot better great it's actually kind of an understated module because it looks it, it at first glance it is just a dual oscillator but I think the normalization in it is what really makes it for the exponential FM and the pulse pulse width modulation because those have been normal between the two oscillators you mean or yeah, there's a normalization going between the two oscillators, so you can get some really uh, much more interesting sounds with it if you want to. Great. And again, well, one thing I, I truly love about gravitational waves is, of course, it's 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 a it's a physics reference. So, is is there any sort of physics background that you have, or? Uh, not really. I'm just a nerd. Uh, I do. <laughs> <laughs> I, I have a large telescope and like astronomy and anything science related. So, uh, oh, perfect. And when I think of void for void modular, uh, my brain goes to like when I, I, I when I pick that name, my brain goes two ways. When I think of void, I either think of space, or I think of like uh, you know H.P. Lovecraft horror movie type things. Nice. So yeah. I really, as far as branding, kind of tried to kind of land somewhere in between the two. <laughs> well it's the reason why i asked that is I've, I've got a physics background i actually studied physics and astrophysics uh well a long time ago uh i might say and every every time i see physics or astrophysics just referenced in a in a in a modular name or in a description it immediately piques my interest so that's why i had to ask that uh but still is the, the is that also the module that you're personally most proud of or is there do you have any other uh well uh teachers pets you might have honestly i think most proud of would for me would be the serious veil because that is um uh, probably you know a lot of my there are some of my designs that probably have a background in um a lot of other like a lot of other old diy modules, diy modules else where I you know originally based it on a schematic from another synthesizer or I uh, you know or, or it's something that I've done like a dozen revisions of over the years when I was playing with my old like giant modular um, but serious veil is really I think like completely from scratch I'm gonna do uh, you know, I wanted a stereo filter in my modular because I have a lot of uh, I have a lot of stereo modules now. I have a, a couple of the Dust of Time modules, and you know, everybody has a lot of. There's more and more stereo stuff all the time. Absolutely, yeah. Um, it's one to one for me, but I, I just think the whole design of it is probably like the best work that I've done with actual ground up design work. Um, that, probably the, uh, is that really met my needs as being a uh, the graviton isn't you would think a uh, single gravitational wave. The graviton is actually my uh, SAM thirty three forty style mm -hmm. oscillator. Uh, but I just wanted to work with good uh, VCO. Um, I think uh, my one of my friends wanted something to replace their Dixie two. Um, and so I wanted like a good small format footprint uh, VCO and I really like how it turned out. You've got uh, the noise and I really like um, on the Graviton I have uh, white noise. There's a jumper on the back where you can select if you want white noise or pink noise. But one of one of the white no one of the noises will be uh, normalized to the FM, mm -hmm. which is, you know, I patch that a lot. I like that kind of. Uh, dirty uh you, you can just do a little bit you get kind of a dirty um 
sounds on your bass lines or whatever. If you do it a lot, you can do kind of a tuned noise thing with the tr I think triangle wave with noise normalized to the FM sounds awesome. Um, so that, that really, I think, is one of the ones that I'm really proud of, too. Superb. But again, I feel like I'm just rambling again. No, 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 absolutely not. This is this is exactly one the reasons why we've asked you as well, is just to, to get a bit of a feeling for uh, what what's driving you as a maker what's driving you as as a musician and what's driving you as a well <laughs> as a human being as well um so you already mentioned some some of the artists that you listened to uh before you actually went into the actual uh the, the whole diy and, and building your own synthesizers have there been any any additional influences that you that you want to uh focus on um i my Taste in music uh, is a little all of, all over the board because I, I like everything from like uh, old industrial and skinny puppy to uh, like uh, I probably listen to too much um, like synthwave style music. So <laughs> um, it, it really is all over the board, though. <laughs> but that's a good thing, of course, because that that a lot of course, of play, yeah. yeah. Sorry. Yeah, no, 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 no. I think I just want to say, well, that's of course a great thing because that, that, of course, will drive you, of course, also when you think about new modules and the things that you want to uh, uh, to be working on, if you've got a broader understanding or at least appreciation of music. I uh, I definitely uh, have like most of a lot of my modules that I, I make are modules that I, I will be looking at my module and say. I, I need, you know, I need this, or I would like, or also I would like to have a version of, you know, I would like to have my own wave shaper, my own, you know, um, mm -hmm. delay model, and, uh, you know, that's where a lot of those start, you know, other things like, uh, you know, modules that I'm like, somewhere between like testing and, uh, troubleshooting that I, I i would like to get working and released one day it's just uh my my attention span is just terrible it's all over the board i'm trying to you know i've got my day job playing with my synthesizer um and then uh filling orders consumes a lot of my time <laughs> and at the same time also thinking about what's going to be next for void modular of course right Right. I, I have been uh, really enjoying, and I, I know when you asked for a logo and I sent you like five, <laughs> yeah. you know, I, I also enjoy sitting around drawing. So there's there's a lot of logos and, uh, I, you know, there will be, I have, at least in, in my case, I will have no shortage, shortage of uh, t-shirt ideas, sticker ideas, and logos. Oh, um, yeah, but absolutely. I end up with more of them than uh, modules at some point, the way I'm going. Yeah, I'm just, I'm just going to copy and paste the uh the merch uh link to the companion channel so that the rest of the gang can have a look at that as well and just to see what's uh, what's in there and yeah i of course immediately uh appreciated the uh, the cats there as well because well we're on the internet then well then you can't go wrong with cats of course so yeah. that's uh <laughs> milton really is the one who runs the show here <laughs> okay everything i do is really dictated by him so, <laughs> perfect. I love that. And you've, oh, yeah. Let me just count them for now. So I've seen at least two designs featuring, uh, featuring Milton. Are there going to come? Are there any others uh, on their way? Or <laughs> yeah, probably. I've got more Milton drives. Oh I've great. Also got a Finn, who is a, a fat orange tabby. Uh, that's on the consume uh, t-shirt yeah uh, but yeah there will, probably, there will probably be more cat based designs one day <laughs> i love started, that i love that so started throwing yeah throwing those onto the silk screens in the back of modules and i also realized that i could do blank panels of this stuff on it too so oh I yeah i just got a, got a batch of uh blank panels and my skulls on them today nice actually, turned out pretty cool Oh, that's great! If you've got any any um, any images, we've got a companion channel there as well. So if you do want to share anything, uh, please feel free to uh, to drop them there. I've already pasted some uh, some links to uh, to the site there as well. And well, one other 
key question is, of course, so how have you been, you as, as Void Modular, been impacted by the, the chip and, uh, well, component shortages right now? Is that something that, that, that's, that, that's worrying you still? Or do you say, well, I've got more than enough and I can just keep on going for now? Um, I am pretty stocked up, but most of the chips that I've need, I mean, I have seen a couple times on um, uh, Mouser where they've, they've been short on some of the stuff that I use, but I think the, the digital, a lot of the digital chips are having a harder time than I am. Okay. So I don't use any, you know, none of my, all my stuff's analog, so I don't have to worry about sourcing uh, STM32s or some of the other. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Newer stuff. The, the actual then, digital uh, ones. Yeah. Yeah, and then some of the some of the stuff lately I've been getting uh, pick and place. So, uh, you know, the pick the PCB houses haven't said anything about had any concerns or you know mm -hmm. rocketed up the price on me. So I, I guess it looks like I'm okay for now. <laughs> no, fingers crossed, man. Fingers crossed. Absolutely. Yeah. No, perfect, perfect. Uh, but yeah, it's a, this is a this is a very uh, low overhead operation that uh, mostly occurs on the other side of my studio. So, <laughs> ah, okay, okay. But still, uh, going by 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 rankings on, on modular grid and and the overall um, well, well, the, the overall uh, well awareness of the Void modular brand that does show that you are among the well uh, the better known brands out there. I don't know how I've done that, but I'm cool with it. <laughs> <laughs> perfect, perfect. But do you have any? Well, of course, you've already talked about the um, uh, the, the the hexagram, of course, being well a lot of bang for the bucks, you might say. Uh, well, but what what, what what's, what's the other thing that you might say? Well, that's that's the, one of the main reasons why that has been so successful. Not just necessarily the hexagram, but the the brand as a whole. You know, I honestly don't know. <laughs> I think this is like I, I, I like the stuff I made. I made it mostly with me in mind, yeah. Rather than other people, honestly. Um, I think I've just I, I have gotten. Uh, you know, my friends have obviously given me a lot of given me input. Um, but honestly, I, I'm I'm not really sure, but I'm grateful. Um, I think the the hexagram is the one that uh, people really. Uh, I, I probably sold more of that than anything else. Mm -hmm. And, uh, but yeah, I, I honestly I I don't know what it is. I, I know people have liked said they like the panels a lot with the especially hexagram or gravitational waves and serious veil where it has a texture to it. Um, graviton. Um, so that has that has, that has yeah, the same uh, well the same I, I, rule yeah on that as well right yeah sorry go ahead no the, the 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 graviton has the 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 um, the design on the panel the actual really yeah, f you might true. say yeah I want to do more of that uh, the texture thing I just uh, I wish I had done it on the hexar but I feel like the panel would be too too busy it's a lot easier on uh, larger panels like the gravitational waves or serious veil because uh, you've got a lot more uh, dead space to put design in i can imagine yeah absolutely uh, you've got a really packed panel uh, like the hexagram or the um hexar it's it just it, it to me it kind of looks would look out of place if it was uh too there was too much going on behind it but i, I may mess with that more at some point Superb, superb. So I, I do have to ask about the, uh, the, the, the entropy cannon as well, because once I saw that, I, I was, I was intrigued what that actually is and how, how it works and, and how, what the actual idea behind that was. Um, the way it works is the, it, it's set up in stages. Uh, the first stage uh, is a preamp. So your audio signal goes into a preamp. It sets so if you have it pretty much down down uh, you know all the way to the bottom your or all the way counterclockwise your um, I think probably uh, nine o'clock on the dial is about where the signal would be um, mm -hmm. level with the modular and then beyond that is for bass guitar or drum machines anything that has a lower level. Mm -hmm. um, after the preamp, it goes into an envelope. It goes to an envelope follower. Um, the signal uh, obviously doesn't pass through the envelope follower, but the envelope yeah. follower is follower is normalized to 
a VCO and a VCF. Um, the signal after it leave, leaves the preamp, the, the audio signal goes to a sample and hold. Um, and the sample and hold's run by the, the VCO. Um, so the higher the frequency is on the VCO, when you have the, the VCO turned all the way up to the highest frequency, uh, there's no crushing to the signal. Once as you uh, bring the VCO frequency down, it uh, mm -hmm. crushes the signal. Um, based on that, based on that frequency, then as well. Or... Right. Yeah. Um, and after it leaves the uh, sample and hold, it goes into a filter, um, and then that, that's the output. The filter is normalized, so you get a, a normalized to the. Um, Envelope faller, as I said, so you know you get a lot of that. Uh, it's great with drum loops because uh, you get a lot of that squelchy uh, resonant mm -hmm. sound, uh, and uh, the you know the choppier the signal gets, you get more. There's more um, harmonics in there that, for the resonance to latch on to, and you get you get some really neat sounds out of it. Um, Perfect. I wish I had one actually plugged in. <laughs> Ooh. Now you've uh, really piqued my interest. Let's see if we can hear something. Well, I, you know, I honestly, I, I took all the cables out of my, I cleaned up my monitor for some reason earlier and, and unpacked everything. And I probably should have patched up some demos beforehand. Yeah. Well, it, it does sound like you're f pretty far away from your microphone. I'm not sure if that's, if that's the case. Oh, sorry. One, one second. Yeah, no, sure, go ahead. This is all just bi building up suspense, you know, right? So this oh, is... Uh... <laughs> Yeah, no, we're all we're all really, really looking forward to this. So this is this is uh, this is great. Make sure I'm not gonna blast you. Hold on one second. Yeah, no worries. <laughs> Bear with me as I figure out how my modular works. <laughs> Perfect. No worries. No worries. In the meantime, um, if everyone can start think about any any sort of questions uh, you've got for Sean, um, I already saw that we had some questions in the companion channel. Uh, but when we do open it up for open Q and A, uh, what we then do is you can just raise your hand and uh, we'll get you up on stage and you can ask your questions uh, live and on the air. Um, so I do have to say that uh, we are trying to record this. So this is again, this is uh, this is just a an experiment that I'm doing um, because I I did get some great feedback from the uh, recording that uh, Alex Myler Melodies did a few weeks ago. So I've gotten a copy of his recording of our uh, of our interview, and um, yeah, that that was great. So I'm trying to see if I'm able to do something similar. And then going to re release that only for the um, the people on this Discord channel. It's not going to be released uh, to the uh, to the worldwide web, so to say. Um, but it, just keep that in mind if you ask any questions. Uh, but if you do ask something and you do want to have that deleted afterwards, just drop me a line. I'm going to do a full review of the recording before we actually release it. Any luck, Sean? No, I'm full of regrets. <laughs> uh, I might have broken that prototype when I was playing with it. Oh, sorry. no, I'm sorry, man. <laughs> okay, we can come back to that. I yeah, no worries, no worries. Um... So we do have already two... Uh... Two things, three things actually. 
So we've got uh, Kira Grondek Sylvia, um, who is uh, pointing out um, it's popular because you make things that are well thought out basics and incredibly unique originals. So that's a piece of feedback for you. And we've got Thinking Man. Uh, if you, when you have a sec, I would love uh, if you could share some of your process of designing new projects. Like, for example, how do you get from a breadboard idea to finished PCB with panels and whatnot? And I'm more looking in the area between the uh, the CAD of the front panel to the layout of parts under the PCB design software. Well, um, you know, I the, my workflow is usually like I'll get it either worked out in um, on breadboard. I hate, 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 hate breadboard. Um, I am actually more prone to like use vector board and do point to point soldering than breadboard sometimes. Um, mm -hmm. I also use a, a couple different uh, software simulators to um, draw up ideas. Um, but usually uh, as far as getting it into CAD, you know, I, I drop, you know, drawing up the, the schematics in, uh, I use Eagle, and uh, the one reason that I've really stuck with Eagle is, my favorite thing about it is, any change I make to the schematic is reflected right away on the um, board. So mm -hmm. if I change out a resistor, if I change um, change a route on, on the schematic, it's gonna reflect that on the board. And I know I can do this in other CAD programs, but I have to manually export the net and re-import, and I'm just, I don't have the attention span for it, and I know I'll screw something up really bad if I do it that way. So I've just <laughs> okay. always used Eagle. I like the whole just connectivity between the board and the schematic. Mm -hmm. um, but usually what I, especially with laying it out, uh, what I will do is I'll place the knobs on, like I'll, I'll set up the board after I have the schematic laid out and uh, get rid of you know all the routing wires and everything else just lay out the board and place the knobs and the jacks where i want everything and then um flip it over to the back side and, and work around that with my parts um great you know i i have a rule set that i, I try not to deviate from but uh, sometimes sacrifices have have to be made if i want to keep it down to one pcb mm -hmm. um and uh, but yeah really that's the biggest thing I, I lay out uh, the panel how I want everything arranged on the panel and then move over to uh, jacks sorry uh, ICs place that find places to place them on the board um, and then uh, I just look at the schematic and hunt the parts that need to be next to those ICs and, and lay them out in a way that'll fit um, I do definitely uh, the, you know work around uh, the panel hardware. Uh, mm -hmm. And there are a couple of designs where I'm going to just need to give up and do a, a sub board on it. I just, uh, I hate the idea because uh, again, <laughs> the schematic won't be attached and it, it scares me. Well, and if and you've been able to avoid it up until now, so yeah. Yeah, it's, it's just so much easier to have everything right there and not have to worry about the like standoff and connectors and all that crap. Um, as far as the, the panels, uh, I usually draw my panels up in um, Adobe Illustrator and then import them into uh, Eagle onto the onto the board. Um, it's not the most ideal way, but as far as getting like art onto a circuit board, I, I posted a picture of one of the the blanks over in the companion yeah. panel, and you can see that the it transfers fairly well. Absolutely, <clears throat> yeah, that's beautiful. It's just a trick. You know, it's just uh, thinking about, especially transferring, you know, something you've drawn, you've got to think about, like, what areas you want to be silk screen, what areas you want to be black, um, which can get uh, mess with your head a bit when you're uh, looking at it and you're adding silver lines. You know, I did a silver outline on some of the stuff, and um, but getting it onto the board sometimes can be a little confusing, especially in Eagle. But... <laughs> <laughs> I, know that, I know there's probably better software out there for this. I just, uh, it's not a leap I felt like taking right now. Well, and there's nothing wrong with using the workflow that works for you, of course. That's one thing. I also meant to mention earlier, because it is important to me, um, the hexagram VCAs, well, I think I did mention earlier that they are basically like the data sheet, um, 
version of, you know, that's the data sheet example of how you do an OTA VCA. Um, it doesn't deviate too far from the basic example, at least. Um, but the actual VCAs that the individual VCAs are based on is the B VCA from the null A2 on, uh, from nonlinear circuits. Okay. Um, with permission, obviously. I asked Andrew before I did it. Um, Great. And he was all, he, he was all for it. But, um, and, and I, I love that. I like when you can work with other designers and they're like, oh yeah, that's cool. If you want to use this little piece, I mean, it, like I said, it is pretty, pretty bare bones, like basic, this is how you build a VCA with an OTA, but it works and it works pretty well. Absolutely. Um, nonlinear circuits is probably one of my favorite, um, favorite modular designers, just cause he's got, you know, he's got so much weird, neat stuff you can build. Um, the, you know, I'm sorry. Is there another question I... Yeah, no worries, no worries. Please, please continue. Because that is, of course, well, uh, the one thing that you are referencing is, of course, the well, the whole community surrounding Eurorack and Modular in general. And, well, uh, you already mentioned that you, you do have some 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 some, some uh, collaboration with, uh, with with NLC, with nonlinear circuits. Um, are you working it, with it, any it, of the other makers as well? Or? It really wasn't as much of a collaboration as I would like. It was more me sending him the, the pictures and the schematic and saying, hey, can I do this? <laughs> um, I, I would love to collaborate with more designers personally. Um, you know, ST Modular I think makes just some amazing look, amazing stuff. That guy is must not sleep. Mm -hmm. um, and I, you know, there's that's not somebody that I've done any collaboration with, but it's somebody that just gives me tremendous design envy. Oh yeah. Um, and uh, I think uh, Electric Druid. I would like to do more stuff. He, I, I used his code for the um, LED, um, the LED view meters I have. Um, which oh yeah, the on, uh, the two HP module. Or oh, how how yeah. big is it? Yeah, yeah, it's two HP. I, I'm doing a. I have a four HP version that's basically the same thing, except it's um, two of them uh, for stereo. Because <laughs> it seems like everybody was buying those in stereo in pairs, so I assume everybody wants to run them in stereo. Nice, so I'm yeah. Doing a cool version that for stereo that also has a headphone out on it mm -hmm. uh, that I'm, I'm looking forward to. Yeah, but his, you know, the Electric Druid stuff, that guy's site is awesome. I'd love to see if I can do like my own version of his, um, some of the other stuff like his, uh, you know, the stuff he has for his chips is so flexible. Like you could, you, you don't have to do any specific design with one of them. Like if you wanted to use his, uh, if you wanted to do a DIY, project with his vco chip you know you could do it any number of ways same with his, his uh lfos and stuff yeah so i'd like to i'd like to get in contact with him at some point again and see if i can do uh or maybe lay something out and get in contact with him and see if i can do a, a version of uh like his his um lfo i'm just i i am not a good programmer and it's just one of those things that i've never like i can i can cut and paste and like uh you know Hobble, cobble some code together that works sometimes, and I'm really proud of myself. But <laughs> I'm not good at it, so I definitely need people like uh, I, I definitely need to work with somebody in the, that regard. But that's that, that's again that's one of the strengths of this community where people can collaborate and can make sure that we we can all stand on the shoulders of giants in that regard, right? Yeah. Absolutely. So I I wanted to ask you my my last question, and then I'm going to open it up for the rest of the um, of the audience. So my my question is then, of course. So what's your one piece of advice for people who are just starting off with Eurorack, and what's your piece of advice for people who are considering getting into the the maker sphere, so to say? Um, you know, with the, I'll start off with the maker part because I, I really think, um, when I first started like building or making void modular stuff, I was really just going to sell it as DIY. Mm -hmm. And, uh, cause I always wanted to give something back to the DIY community because I enjoyed making, uh, these modules so much. I'm just a really bad teacher. So I, I feel like, um, <laughs> I can't, uh, I, I don't do as well in that regard because I don't, um, you know, I, I, I'm bad about 
getting back to people sometimes uh, when they ask questions that I don't have time to answer. Yeah. And I worry that I would do that with uh, some of the DIY builders and uh, pick up a bad name. So I, I really try to not, I, you know, I haven't wanted to release any thing that's not, you know, pretty easy or uh, well documented. Um, but I think if, for people that want to get into uh, DIY building, uh, one of the most, you know, the biggest things is to, just to start off. Um, I hate to say it, breadboarding circuits, you know, yeah. if, if you're building uh, a filter, it really isn't that hard to, you know, breadboard it out. Uh, breadboard does suck and it's annoying. And usually your failures on breadboard are more the breadboard than the parts. Um, but it's the best way to learn how to, how things work. But, you know, your second best would be, you know, an online simulator, but the online simulators don't always Mm -hmm. Uh, do what they're supposed to but really um you know starting out, i started out with uh, uh paya i think were some of my first kits i did mm -hmm. and uh, starting out, i think starting out with kits to familiar familiarize yourself with everything and then yeah. moving into uh trying to work up your own or build up your own circuits from experimentation um is is really a, uh the best way to go for getting started great did that, make, did that make sense that, that, that make sense? absolutely that makes a lot of sense uh, like i i love the uh you know i i built a couple uh i built a couple sound labs when the music from outer space site started up mm -hmm. um and i learned just a, you know ray wilson's stuff was to me was just amazing because of his the work he put into the descriptions of how the circuit works and you know laying out every little detail that's not easy especially like i couldn't do that i'm not a, like i said before i'm a terrible teacher um and as far as getting the euro rack i i i have a very odd route into euro rack since i would most of my gear is diy yeah uh, I, I probably just have a handful of well it's got a little little more than a handful now but you know I have a whole lot of commercial modules but from what I've seen with my friends who and other people who got into it after me is the uh, people seem to expect um, the environment to be more like VSTs. And I think some people are kind of uh, surprised when they try to use it. You know, I, I've seen people uh, get a modular cabinet and fill it with you know nothing but effects which if you're gonna <laughs> if you're just running an audio signal through it that's fine but i really think the best way to start out is you know something like a, a mother 32 or one of the other uh, yeah like all in one uh semi-modular sense so you mm -hmm. can learn how the signal works um obviously something that's not pre-patched would be better because then people could actually really learn the signal flow yeah um so you know even if you could just start out with a very simple people just started out with a very simple vco vcf vca you know all the basic modules just a simple would, voice I, you mean yeah yeah simple yeah exactly a simple voice um which is another thing i'm working on <laughs> mm. but uh, you know the uh I, I really think that that's the best way to go because you really learn how you, you really learn your patching you you have to have it like if you if you get a mother thirty two, you learn the basics and you can do some patching. But if you get like individual, like you know, just four to five individual simple modules, you really learn more about patching than you would if you got like a mother thirty two or a neutron or something else. Yeah. Um, but yeah, starting out simple and not going with um, an entire case full of like super weird modules is great for is a great way to start off learning. I think. Perfect. And I feel like that. a lot of people dive into some super complex modules, which I, I appreciate and is, you know, I like those modules, but it's not, it, it's more of a learning curve than necessary. And sometimes pe because of that, people don't, um, they, they, they don't yeah. think about their uh, actual end product. Uh, it might yeah. scare them away as, as well, right? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, exactly. It scares them away. Yeah, perfect. Perfect. Oh, that, that's, that's, <laughs> 
I love that, and I I I, I do love that you <laughs> you didn't answer with the <laughs> with a typical staple like have a plan beforehand or know what you want to achieve. No, it's indeed well. This is what you need to start with. I, I love that. Thanks so much for that, Sean. So um, before we open it up, so we do have. Um, one comment here from Tokyo Drip. He says, or she says, or they say, Sean, I love you. So that's always good. I and... appreciate that. It's <laughs> like I have an audience full of paid shills today. Sorry, <laughs> sorry, I missed that. It's like I have an audience full of paid shills today. <laughs> oh, you brought them in, right? So yeah. <laughs> I hate them, they're, they're here because they appreciate me. No, that's absolutely great. Absolutely, no worries. So, uh, with that being said, I do want to uh, open it up for the for the audience. So, if you do have a comment or if you want to uh, confess your undying love for Sean in audio format, this is now your chance to do that and uh, become uh, immortal uh, with the uh, recording that's still running, apparently. Uh, but again, if you do want to have your segment removed, feel free to uh, drop me a line. So. I would say, open it up, raise your hands, don't be shy. I don't bite, I can't speak on Sean's behalf. Oh, come on, guys. Oh, there we go. <laughs> so, oh, there we go. So we've got Pressure Wave. Let me just invite them up to the audio. Yeah, there you go. So you do have to click Accept if you want to uh, join us on stage, uh, Pressure Wave. Uh, didn't I just invite you to speak? Yeah, there you go. Whoa, here we go. So invite to speak. Try it again. So you, um, I've just uh, invited you on stage, Pressure Wave. So you now need to probably accept that, uh, that invite. Hmm. Not sure why that's not working. Um, could anyone else volunteer to uh, see if the uh, the invite is working? Not sure who is there. Uh... Yeah, let me just do it like that. There you go. Thanks, thinking man. There you go. Oh, so so that 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 does work. Great. Well, yeah. If if you if you've got any comments or if you want to. Uh, Confess your undying love for Sean. This is this is your time. <laughs> well, I just want to say I appreciate you answering my questions, man. The, no uh, problem. I'm, no problem. I'm trying to get I'm trying to get into this stuff, and it was really helpful to see how like someone's actually done it. Like, what's the process, you know? Yeah, uh, that it was, there was definitely a learning curve involved there. Oh yeah. <laughs> I, used, I actually used Eagle before I started designing actual like PCBs uh, to do. Um, I, I kind of. Uh, plan out uh, vector board layouts uh, when I was just doing like my, my one-off modules in my old modular. Uh, so to me, it was like, you know, when I was like, oh, I'm going to design some circuit boards, Eagle was an easy fit because I'd used it before. Um, I, definitely, I, I really like KiCad and some of the stuff that it has in it and um, some of the other software packages out there. Uh, Dip Trace is just seemed awesome. Uh, I'm just... Uh, I can't handle the anxiety of switching those right now. <laughs> no, no, no. You have something that works and roll with it, you know? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, I yeah, just wanted to say thank you. And as soon as I come up with other questions, I'm sure I'll ask them. <laughs> yeah, no worries. Thanks so much, thinking man. I do appreciate it. Yeah, no problem. So it does seem that uh, Pressure Wave has some 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 challenges there. Um, let's see. So we do get... Oh, well, that's another one of your uh, blanks. Thanks so much, Sean. That that looks beautiful, actually. That is really nice. Wow. I knew I could uh, like somehow uh, find something to do with my hobby of sitting around and doodling. So, well, it, this is this is of course great because this is exactly what where you do where you, where you are capable of combining both <laughs> both passions, you might say. So that's that's perfect. No, that's great. So um, well, let's give it one final go to see if we can get Pressure Wave up on the stage. There we go. There we go. Hey. Finally. Hey, how you been? I, I switched to the uh, to the app. 
ah. other than on my computer. Uh, I was just here to confess my undying love for Sean. That's really the main thing. <laughs> Perfect. I mean, I mean, Thank you. I appreciate it. I need that. Yeah. You say. you know you know but um you know I I did I did want to say I think it's been really interesting um to see Void growing and uh, the the designs uh, kind of like pivoting from what were undoubtedly extremely valuable basic designs I I mean like when we think about like you know the like you know the um the uh, I'm trying to remember all the names like the uh, hexagram for instance. Um, you know, and like how much value that packs into, you know, per HP and for the price and all that. But I mean, Sean, just commenting, like, as I've seen your modules grow, I think what, what I'm most excited about is, um, as you continue to develop things that just sort of pop into your imagination and cause those have, I think pretty resoundingly been the most, uh, you know, inspirational modules. I mean, I love using all the basics that you've designed, but I, I think I'm just so excited to see what else you've got floating around in your brain. So uh, I'm, I'm excited about it and thanks. I'm glad to hear this talk today. Great. Thanks so much. Uh, um, the, you know, it, I, I just remembered something I meant to mention earlier. When you asked about things I was proud of, the entropy cannon, um, I think the, the way I designed that is more in line with kind of how I, I see myself moving in the future with some, a lot, some of these. Because the entropy cannon really is like the combination of modules kind of, it's like a patch uh, really clustered together. You know, it, it doesn't, um, you, you could actually, to do the same functionality, you could technically patch that on your modular. It's just a lot, e lot better off being a, you know, a 10 HP module than, you know, a, whole, a full patch. And I, I think there's probably more modules like that I could design. And also, thank you, uh, Pressure Wave, for the Undying Love. <laughs> Perfect. Love that. So we then have uh, Tokyo Drip coming on stage, if that works. So, the, yeah, my, my poor friends, when I first designed, I think um, when I first designed, like, I, my M Plus mixer, I think I showed up at a modular Monday at our local makerspace and, like, pretty much just forced it on everybody. Hey, you got to get one of these. <laughs> Hey, take one of these. <laughs> I don't know, but <laughs> that's the best way to get yourself known, right? Yeah. Great. Uh, we are joined on stage with uh, with Tokyo Drip. Hey, guy. I can barely hear you. As you've grown from a, a hobbyist maker to, you know, someone who's professionally producing modules, um, what are some of the, the kind of hidden gotchas that you've had to adapt to? And what are some things that you keep in mind now when designing that you might not have in the beginning? Good question. Um, there are, I mean, yeah, there are a few things, you know, I, uh, have definitely taken to heart um, some of the stuff like I, I i don't know if anybody else is, if any if i made anybody or anybody's watched the uh paul schreiber uh thing from control where he talks about module design but i, I watched that and took notes you know i my, my biggest fear on earth is paul schreiber one day critiquing one of my designs or seeing them because i'm <laughs> sure he'd find something wrong with them and i'd just be uh crushed but uh <laughs> You know, well, we've had Paul on the show a couple of weeks back, and he, he's he's a friendly guy. Don't be afraid. It was, I was definitely, yeah, I, I I definitely have always uh, thought, oh my god, if he ever sees the back, if, if he ever sees this blank, I'll be in trouble. Or, but um, no, I, I think uh, realizing that you have to plan for things that you wouldn't do, like you know, obviously, I, I've always put diodes on the power. But now I, I try to make that power header as clear as possible, um, just because you wouldn't imagine that somebody would force a power header, header down like halfway through it, but it's it's possible and people will do it. Oh um, yeah. So you end up with the you know ground connected to the negative. So um, some of my stuff I'd like to go back and start doing uh, box headers on. Some of my stuff like the the graviton there is. 
no conceivable way I can move things around to get one on there. So just good labeling. I do the uh, little um, red uh, red header on the negative side, you know, to try to make it as clear as possible. Um, there's other things that you would do on DIY uh, that I would never do um, in a commercial module. Like, you know, there's things I used to do, like, you know, normalizing a jack to 12 volts. Never do that, <laughs> you know, <laughs> or normalizing a jack. To, you know, I, I, I had an old uh, MIDI to CV converter on my old modular that was uh, based on the MIDI box. And it, like, the gate outputs kept dying. I couldn't figure out what the hell it was. And then I realized that one of my envelope generators um, was the, the trigger input was normalized to 12 volts. For, so just that like sliding in the jack and that, that second where the input hit 12 volts was shorting out the, um, shorting out the inputs on the pick because I didn't have them protected. Because <laughs> uh, it was DIY, you run fast and loose. You don't care as long as it works. <laughs> so you know, there's, a, there's definitely a lot of things that I would never do. I would do DIY that I would never do and actually sell to somebody. Was that the actual question, or did I just start rambling? Mr. Drip, sir? <laughs> He's lost for words, apparently. Yeah, yeah. Well, he's still on mute, so uh, there's a reason why we can't hear, uh, hear him. I've spent enough time on conference calls in the last two years with everybody on mute that I, I know this drill. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, we're living on Teams. We're living in Zoom. We're living in, well, any other conferencing software there is. Yeah. Hopefully it's, it's not WebEx, at least. It's not WebEx. Whenever somebody says Teams, though, it gives me a little shiver. So. <laughs> <clears throat> Oh, that's the that's the normal knee jerk reaction nowadays, of course. Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah, he's. Uh, it looks like he's having trouble coming off of mute in the other oh, channel. Oh, I can see. Oh, yeah, it's perfect. Well, he's say yeah. he's saying. Well, yeah, you rock. I love you. I can't talk anymore. I'm here and listening. Just had to stay muted. Sorry. No worries, Tokyo Drip. We appreciate the uh, the sentiment. We might say perfect. Yeah. Well, and that almost brings us to the uh, top of the hour. Um, so that being said, uh, well, uh, Mr. Void Modular, Sean, um, again, thank you so much for joining today's uh, Clubhouse Meet. I do want to give you a podium, of course, and if there's any closing remarks or, or, or particular wisdoms you want to instill us with. Hey, um... I don't know that I do have anything good for you. Sorry. <laughs> uh, I, I'm, I'm not exactly dripping with wisdom, so yeah, I, no uh, worries. You are you are dripping with with with, with modular genius. So uh, please keep doing that. Cat synthesizers and skulls is uh, pretty much like that. That's that's my purview right there. I, beyond that, I'm I'm useless. Don't you worry, don't you worry. Well, again, thank you so much for joining. Uh, for everyone else uh, listening, uh, maybe listening to the uh, to the recording right now, uh, thanks everyone for your time. Thanks everyone for, for for joining. Thanks everyone for at least listening to this part of the uh, of of today's meet. I uh, do want to uh, thank well Void Modular Sean again for joining. And um, for those of you who don't know, we do have a well a, a YouTube channel um, accompanying these meetings. It is uh, youtubecom slash clubhouse where we do uh, weekly videos on modular and synthesizer equipment and well more generic music development uh, things as well. Um, so please have a look there as well. And uh, for now, I would say please stay on the uh, discord channel join in the conversation and for now I would say everyone please everyone absolutely everyone uh, please stay safe stay healthy and i hope to see you uh, for our next meet next week and let me just double check who we'll have then dun, dun, dun. i did forget one thing so oh it's so next, quick yeah sure go ahead 
would, I just wanted to say thank you for everybody because I'm still blown away that people all over the world want my want to buy my modules. It blows absolutely blows my mind on a regular basis that like there's guys in Japan and Korea and like just all over Europe that have my modules in their their synthesizers and like a part of me still just doesn't believe it <laughs> you know <laughs> i thought it was crazy when people were buying my diy stuff and, and they, they liked it and i i just i all i've got to say is i i just really appreciate it you know i anybody that like really seems like the people that really seem to think a lot of my stuff i i, I thank you <laughs> and, and thanks to everybody for listening Oh, thanks so much, Sean. Absolutely Thank brilliant. You. We'll be in touch. And um, for now, everyone, have a great rest of the day. And uh, see you next week when we've got, uh, I'm going to mispronounce this name, of course, uh, Istvan from Urian Modular, Urian Synths, uh, all the way from Hungary, if I'm not mis mistaken, uh, who's going to be joining us next week. So hope to see you then. Keep in touch. If you've got any questions, drop me a line. Uh, either on Discord, drop me a line at Jesper at the Modular Clubhouse dot NL or well reach out through any of the other channels you might be able to reach me on. For now, thanks again. Cheers. Bye bye. Thanks, bye.